All right. So, uh, hi everyone. I am Rajesh Sigla. I am founder of Planify. So, I will uh, today be talking about angel investing and I will try to make it uh, interesting so that it doesn't sound boring. So, before uh, angel, uh, so, and we will talk about, so, I will just give you a brief that what we are going to talk about. Then we will start with the, uh, the interactive section. So, uh, we'll talk about what, are, what is this new uh, animal, as Neha said, what is this new animal, what are angel investors, uh, how this even originated, uh, and uh, what is the power of angel investing, uh, how much returns you should expect in angel investing. And there are a lot of financial terminologies, uh, so we'll decode them, we'll try to understand uh, what uh, these uh, terminologies actually mean. Uh, we'll also talk about portfolio allocation, asset allocation. This is the most important part uh, uh, from an uh, uh, investing point of view that how much money you should put into one stock or one angel, uh, one one uh, uh, startup or SME and how much uh, uh, and how you should basically do the complete asset allocation and how, how you should do the complete portfolio allocation of your uh, money. Uh, we'll also talk briefly on investor rights, uh, what kind of investor rights you have while investing into startups. Then how can you source deals uh, for angel investing? How do you evaluate deals? Uh, what is the due diligence process like? Uh, what are the checks and balances you should take care uh, before investing? Uh, how should you manage deals uh, end to end? Uh, uh, what are your exit strategies when you should exit? We'll also talk about uh, the taxation part. Uh, what kind of taxation uh, is... Uh, basically uh, uh, like what, what kind of taxations we have uh, here uh, how and we will also talk about how do we uh, how we can add value to our startups where we are investing apart from giving the financial uh, money what kind of other things uh, we can actually help uh, the founder uh, with uh, similarly we will in, in the end we will also talk about the risk because uh, uh, investing as any in any assets we need to also understand the risk, uh, what kind of risk we are getting involved in. And finally, we'll talk a bit about uh, Planify uh, to brief it up. And in total, there are 14 modules. So uh, it's a pretty lengthy thing. Like uh, even if we have to talk uh, for a full day, we can do that. Uh, these are quite detailed topics. But I'll try to sum this up. Uh, uh, I'll try to sum this up in less than an hour so that uh, it, it uh, remains relevant and uh, not so, uh, it remains relevant and you get to understand uh, end to end uh, in at least uh, brief uh, about these 14 modules. So uh, who are angel investors? So if I have to talk about uh, like uh, who are angel investors? Huh? So people in general, uh, that, that definition goes as in uh, people who invest early into startups early age startups uh, are basically angel investors. So uh, after friends and family, like if someone is investing uh, a small check and these small checks are anywhere between two lakhs to anywhere between five or 10 crores. So it could be uh, different uh, angel checks uh, which are get, getting written uh, to the company. Uh, so these type of investors, we call them angels. And uh, where do you get these angels? Like on our platform itself, we have more than 10,000 angels. So whenever a new organization or new startup or an SME or a pre-IPO comes in, they invest in these companies uh, at, at, as, uh, at an early stage. I'll talk about what are the benefits uh, uh, they get uh, when they invest early. Anna? Now, uh, first of all, uh, why you should do angel investing or even if this angel investing thing is uh, meant for you, uh, and who should not even think of doing angel investing? Like, uh, what kind of uh, uh, returns we should expect from angel investing? Uh, and also, we'll talk about uh, whether this angel investing should be done uh, in India or it should be done, uh, or we should uh, see outside India for doing angel investments. What kind of angel investment opportunities are present in India? We'll also talk about uh, the definition of angel investors from SEBI point of view. So uh, to cover the first uh, topic, why to do angel investing, I'll take a brief moment to explain uh, the concept of uh, IPOs. So let's uh, uh, re revive our, uh, uh, our time uh, to 1980s and 1990s, uh, 30 to 40 years back. 
this was a point uh, this was the time when uh, there used to be a lot of uh, startups there used to be a lot of uh, companies who used to come and list on the stock market and these companies were used to be fairly uh, small in nature like infosys when they came up with their ipo the total company valuation was uh, close to 100 crores and today the company is, is, total valuation is more than uh, 4 lakh or more than 4 lakh crores or close to 4 lakh crores so at, in 1993 when they come and came up with their ipo th that was a fairly very small company similarly uh, so someone if we would have invested only 1 lakh rupees uh, in these in any of these counter so in case uh, someone would have put in 1 lakh in aisher motor so aisher motor is a company which creates bullet uh, uh, bullet bikes so that 1 lakh rupees itself will become 8 crores in asian paint if someone would have put in 1 lakh in uh, asian paints today its net worth is close to 9 crores so and for hdfc is 10 crore uh, so and so forth uh, for infosys it's close to 20 crores for Dr. Reddy, it is close to 100 crores. And Wipro, it is whooping uh, amount of 7,000 crores. Now, these amounts are extremely huge. If uh, in, Even if we consider this a 30-year or a 40-year tenure, these investments are extremely big uh, in size now. So, if we would have done the similar 1 lakh rupees investment in a fixed deposit, and assuming we are getting a 9% uh, return, our money generally gets doubled in eight years. So this is a power of uh, rule of 72 that uh, if, we, uh, if the, whatever the interest rate you are getting into the number of years is equal to 72. Uh, so you will basically uh, understand in how many years you will double your money. So if you are getting a 9% return in eight years, uh, you are making the double of your money. So assuming this to be even a 40 year tenure, so 1 lakh will become 2 lakh, 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16 and 16 further becomes 32, uh, 30, uh, 32 lakhs. But I'm not talking about lakhs, I'm talking the bare minimum which I have put in here is 8 crores. This is extremely huge. Huh? So the returns uh, overall are more than 40 to 50 percent uh, per year. That is why they have compounded to this substantial amount. So this was uh, the power of IPOs uh, back then. When where today even people do not get enough of good uh, IPOs. IPOs are generally very uh, highly oversubscribed. Uh, so even if any new company is coming in, uh, mostly it gets oversubscribed and people do not get enough of the shares whenever a new company is getting listed. So this is the reason why people like to invest in IPOs. But back then, if you actually realize after 2007 in page industry, so page industry is something uh, uh, where uh, jockey uh, basically it's a jockey brand uh, so and it creates a lot of undergarments and uh, inner wares uh, and it's a good company after 2007 there is not even a single company which has come into this uh, into this list similarly even if you see the 2000 decade itself uh, after 1994 there is only one company page industries which has basically listed so what happened in 1994 uh, we have to basically see that in 1994, there was a, a person named Harshad Mehta and there was another person, Ketan Parikh. They did a lot of scams by creating a lot of bogus companies which were basically doing no business. And they took out a lot of money from the investors and basically uh, due to which a like, uh, lot of scams and even there were there are TV series TV series which has got recently created and it, and it was one of the highly viewed uh, TV series. Uh, so most of it uh, basically went uh, uh, buzzard because uh, the company there was no basically uh, there was no good business or company doing legitimate business these were all bogus or shell companies so in 1995 sebi was formed and it was formed to uh, take care of the interest of uh, the investors and first thing which they did was that they banned uh, listing of small companies on the platform so now you have to have a substantial sum of uh, like you have to have substantial sum uh, revenue and uh, profits in order you in order to get your company listed on the main uh, stock market. So uh, and there is one fundamental rule of stock market: the pace at which uh, the company grows, stock price follows the same. So if your company is growing by let's say hundred percent, the stock price will also be rising by hundred percent. 
it could be that in euphoria because the market sentiment is very positive rather than 100% you might get 500% uh, uh, returns in a year whereas the company has only uh, performed uh, like uh, has grown by 100% so this is another uh, scenario where we are able to generate returns uh, because of the differential uh, uh, of the sentiments uh, which comes with the fear and greed of people but that's the separate part in totality, in a longer run, the pace of growth of an org any organization will determine the stock price. So when these companies were smaller, like for Infosys, if I talk about, for first eight years, they grew more than 100, 100% every year. So there were, there were years when they have grown by even 300%, 200%. And that is the same kind of wealth which they generated uh, for the investors. Uh, for first 10 years, they were almost growing by more than 100%. So, two key part 10, if we actually see, becomes 1024. 1, it's 1024 times. So, it's close to 1000 times of your investment. So, that 1 lakh basically grew and uh, grew to 1, uh, basically that 1 lakh itself uh, grew to 10 crores. And eventually, uh, that uh, post that the company started growing by uh, almost 15 to 20% or less than 20, uh, now Infosys is growing by 10 to 12 percent and the stock price is following the same thing. Uh, similarly, the new companies which are, uh, so this, this was the play which has happened for almost all the companies which I have uh, mentioned here. Now, after 1995, SEBI created this, uh, uh, SEBI created this uh, caveat that only good big companies can list on the platform, on their platform. A lot of shift has come in uh, where uh, a lot of uh, investment started happening uh, started happening on the private space. Uh, I have taken now uh, some of the companies which everyone today knows. So starting from Flipkart, if someone would have invested uh, 1 lakh rupees in Flipkart, today its net worth is close to 60 crores. That 1 lakh rupees has grown to 60 crores. In OYO, if someone would have invested early 8 years back, it is uh, close to 50 crores. Similarly, for Swiggy, it is 30 crores, so and so forth. Uh, all the companies here, uh, we, we are, even for Mamar, uh, 1 lakh rupees of investment is today close to 15 crores. And even for the upstocks or uh, share chat, uh, the values are quite substantial. So from 1995, the market has started shifting towards uh, private, where people have started investing early into these companies. Uh, and uh, with the pace of the growth of these companies, their money basically uh, grew at a very fast pace. So investors like uh, uh, investors like uh, uh, so one of the very popular Shark Tank uh, judge Anupam Mittal, he invested very early in Oyo, uh, sorry in Ola, and uh, his money has basically grown uh, in uh, 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 like his overall Shadi.com has not performed that well. Uh, the business has not uh, taken off, but his investment, a very small check amount of uh, investment in Ola has grew more than 1600% uh, for him. Uh, and that kind of, and this is the reason he has created a lot of wealth. Uh, and today his net worth is more than 200 crores just because of that one single investment uh, done in Ola at a very early stage, about 10 years back. So what I basically wanted to point out was that the companies which used to, so this used to happen uh, 30 years back on the listed uh, stock market. Now it has started happening uh, in private space that these new companies are coming in. And because of the pace of the growth of these companies, uh, the investment amount is growing extremely substantially. This is the reason why we should consider angel investing. Uh, now, even uh, let's talk about. Uh, so, I'll I'll talk. I, I also want to talk about about SME uh, SME IPO. So, in 2013, uh, SEBI also realized that uh, they are missing on. Uh, so, a lot of uh, founders are missing on uh, this angel investments, and they also created a, uh, a SME platform where S on SMEs a lot of companies are getting listed. And these companies are also performing well. Again, the same concept. So I've created uh, the, the information you can see on the web, uh, on the deck. Like the companies which have come in, uh, they, they have created massive wealth uh, where they have given a return of anywhere between 1,000 to uh, like more than 1,000% to 10,000% in last uh, five to seven years. Uh, and the similar story is even, even uh, uh, getting achieved even in the present year in 2023. 
like many lot of companies are growing at a very fast pace again the same concept which i want to concentrate that the companies uh, because the, their base was small they were able to grow at a fast pace due to which uh, they are also creating a lot of wealth today even an sme ipo the last week itself there was one company which was trying to raise close to 50 crores and more than 10000 crore worth of investment uh, was committed by the investors for that to get the shares of that company this is the kind of euphoria which is getting built in sme ipo so this is another very hot space which we should look at uh, while investing and uh, they have created the same concept that the minimum ticket size uh, even for these sme ipos are is anywhere between 1 lakh uh, is more than 1 lakh mostly it is close to uh, one uh, anywhere between 1 to 2 lakh and at times it is even uh, higher than 2 lakhs the same concept which uh, basically even uh, works for angel investments so let's see about uh, so i'll take a moment to again see the similar kind of returns uh, for planify so till today we have done close to 31 exit and out of the 31 exits we have jotted 15 exits on, on on this slide so we have exited so we have done investment in cdsl where we invested at 60 rupees today company's uh, present price is close to 1200 or more than that similarly dmart we invested at 300 and today's its net worth uh, its price is 3600 uh, similarly there are lot many other companies uh, you you would have heard about uh, and lot of companies even were not even aware, like people were not even aware. When we used to talk about Nazara or Anandrati, <clears throat> people have never heard about the company names. But today they have created massive wealth for their investors. I We still hold Anandrati in our portfolio and there are a few other companies like Five Star we still hold in our portfolio. Even CDSL we are still holding in our portfolio. Bikaji we are still holding in our portfolio. So if someone would have invested, let's say 10 lakh rupees, even in these 15 counters, their total sum is close to 10.5 crores. And if I talk about all the 31 companies where we have done successful exit, the total, uh, so if someone would have invested close to 3 crores, the total net worth is close to 17 crores uh, in total corpus. And our average XIRR comes to be 117%. Uh, for these 15 companies, it is close to 86%, which we have shown here. So these numbers are extremely large, extremely big, like 86%. Uh, so a, we are very happy if we are able to generate more than 26%, uh, to be honest. Because if you are growing by 26% in every three years, your money will double. So for an investment horizon of 30 years, this 10 lakh rupees investment will become basically 100 crores. Like every three years, your 10 lakh will double. So 10 becomes 20, 20 becomes 40, 40 becomes 80 lakh. So and so forth, even for three years uh, window, you are able to generate 26% uh, wealth uh, every year uh, on a CAGR returns. In 30 years, that 10 lakh rupees investment will basically become 100 crores. 2 key power 10, again, 1000 times of 10 lakh bid is basically 100 crores. So this kind of massive returns can basically be generated uh, if, if we are even compounding only at 26%. So in totality, angel investments uh, are the uh, best uh, return performing, like, in any asset class, if we talk about like gold, fixed deposits, bonds, NCDs, uh, you, you talk about listed stock markets, mutual funds, uh, real estate. Uh, so out of all of uh, the asset classes, even uh, the cryptocurrencies and all, the best performing asset class is uh, the angel investing, where in totality, the returns are close to 34%. Uh, this is the worldwide data which I'm talking about. At Planify, we are able to beat that. Uh, that's a, like uh, God has been gracious. Uh, we The way we, with which we work, we are able to shortlist companies. We have been able to achieve 86%. Uh, so at more than 26%, you double your money in every three years. If you are growing by 41%, you're basically doubling your money in every two years. And... Uh, as I said, uh, we, we are able to get uh, even better returns. Uh, and again, so this this is a bit about uh, a bit on the investment side, like why we should even consider angel investing. I hope it is clear, uh, but I wanted to basically uh, convey here, like uh, why they should- uh, all uh, very greedy. I think everybody in the room is dropping me questions like how can we start? What is the minimum amount? Uh, we have a question by uh, Shilpa, which says, what is the minimum amount required? And Raksha is asking, as a newbie into investing, as an angel, what are 
key factors one needs to keep in mind or look for in making investment uh, so i'm i'm assuming those are things which are coming up in the presentation Hi. so maybe uh, we can jump to answering those questions as well rajesh while we are taking up the next segment Hi. so i will cover up uh, like what we should consider before investing so this is going to be covered in our topic uh, uh, so we will talk as i said we will talk about uh, this in our asset allocation and portfolio allocation and we will cover this up uh, don't worry please uh, just be patient uh, so that it becomes that the overall flow becomes uh, simple to understand i'll cover this up and angel investing again i'll talk about uh, the minimum as well as uh, how much uh, 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 money you should put in in any startup or in any pre ipo we'll talk about this uh, in our next slides just be patient like in 5 to 7 minutes i'll be there okay we are with you so now let's talk about why you so so abhi tak we talked about why you should think of uh, angel investing now reasons not why you should not do angel investing you should never do angel investing in uh, in the uh, so lot of people do angel investor investment because of fomo like fear of missing out my friend invested so i should invest or some big angel investor invested so i should invest or if uh, there are big in angel investor renowned uh, vcs inhone to apna like due diligence kar liya hoga so we should invest so this kind of philosophy basically uh, uh, is not really uh, helpful so i have again taken few few of examples i can basically jot down uh, more than 20 examples here like vijay shekhar sharma he has invested uh, a good amount of money in zimber and the company shut down even anand lal sir yeah these are well known uh, investors and uh, they he invested in madai madaili and the company shut down in 2016 so looking at the other side of it uh, Uh, in 2022, angel investors lost more than 5.7 billion dollars, which is close to 47,000 crores. In last year itself, investors have lost more than 3 billion dollars, which is close to even if I assume uh, one dollar to be 80 rupees, although it's now 84. Uh, even if we assume it to be 80 rupees, uh, this 3 billion dollar is equivalent to 24,000 crores. So why people are losing so much money? when uh, angel investments and uh, everything is going good so the biggest reason and we have all the resources like it is not 1995 where people can be cheated now everything is available online everything is available uh, on a click of a button but then why investors are losing so much money the biggest reason uh, we we have basically figured out is uh, the fomo where people want to invest in without understanding the company or their business Uh, so they should not do that ki isne kiya hai maybe kar leta hu that that we should not do and we will talk about uh, there is a systematic and methodical approach of investing so we will cover that ha na so these are the basically the risk uh, uh, which is uh, associated with angel investments overall uh, so uh, the people why they uh, what kind of people should not invest in angel investing so first is people who so as an investment uh, we generally say if people do not want to lose uh, money they have a, a very uh, so there is always a chance that even in the listed market we are seeing the company going bust so it it can even happen even in the private companies in fact even for the private companies the risk is higher with the, if we are investing in a company in private the risk is even higher if we do not understand the business well so there is always the risk of losing uh, the money so if the person does not want to lose uh, does not uh, feel comfortable losing any money then they should not invest then fixed deposits or uh, bonds or those kind of uh, things can basically uh, th those kind of investors should look at those uh, uh, safe returns uh, kind of a thing o obviously there is a, the uh, risk मतलब risk with risk there is there is kind of returns also gets associated with it similarly uh, the another caveat to this is lack of, lack of liquidity so today in listed market you can invest today and on the same day you can sell you can do that multiple times but that is not possible in angel investing so when while i talked about angel investing earlier everywhere we have talked uh, uh, for more than like we we have talked the investments to be more than uh, 3 years 5 years 7 years in general at planify our minimum investment horizon we uh, it's 
uh, it's between 18 months to 72 months. So between one and a half years to six years, the investment horizon is uh, almost uh, that. So people who want to invest today and want to liquidate tomorrow, uh, they, they do not. So this is not the market for them. So people who are basically traders, they should look at listed companies uh, doing their trading. They should not uh, think of angel investing. Here, people, those kind of, it is the market for those kind of investors who want to invest uh, small sums or uh, proper uh, doing portfolio allocation and want to invest uh, in that company for at least a good amount of time. In any, even in the stock market, we do not ask investors to invest if their investment horizon in general is less than of uh, five years. Five years, yes. So less than five years, we generally do not even suggest that they should look at stock market. So similar the concept here, we will not ask someone to invest because they have an investment horizon of let's say 12 months or six months. The, those people who, who uh, should invest, who want to invest for a longer tenure. It, it is possible that because of the euphoria, rather than five years, you get rewarded in 18 months. Rather than five years, you get rewarded in three years. Rather than five years, you get rewarded even in a year. That's a good, that's a uh, over and above which can happen because of the stock market sentiment. But we should not think that we will, we will get an exit in 18 months, so we should invest. Or we will get an uh, exit in two years, we should invest. In totality, our overall thought process should be that for five years, at least five for five years, five years, five years, five years, five years, five years. So, and again, because uh, uh, other three things like overall, what kind of valuations you are putting in money. So we will talk about this thing in detail uh, in our coming slide. What is the kind of uh, control investor rights we will talk about and uh, what kind of rights you should have while doing private investments. And the time and effort uh, is, uh, which is required to do uh, to keep a track. Uh, similarly, so I'll not talk about again uh, what to expect from angel investment. So, uh, so the, the the these are the success stories we have seen enough. Uh, so this is uh, for some renowned investors uh, we have got in. Uh, so expectation from angel investment. But what do you basically invest? Uh, why do you should even consider doing angel investment? First reason is uh, very big returns, which I have showcased uh, even in our uh, earlier slides that you can actually make a hell lot of money. Uh, so the returns are pretty awesome and you cannot ignore those kind of returns. 34% or 86% or even 26% return is extremely good when it compare, when we compare it with uh, any 6 to 8% or 9% or anywhere even for mutual funds, even if we compare it between 10 to 15%. The returns are extremely high uh, with the other asset classes. This is the biggest reason why you should uh, invest. Others, uh, there are other uh, expectations like you, you get to learn a lot what is coming new in the market. So like there is a lot of interest on artificial intelligence, EVs, electric vehicles, and the new buzz which is going to get created uh, in next 20 years, 30 years uh, down the line. You get to learn a lot. You get to meet a lot of uh, good uh, in, uh, good investors as well as good uh, founders. So the people who are visionary, mm -hmm. you get a uh, chance to meet them, understand them, uh, learn a lot from them. Uh, so these kind of things uh, we, we get uh, from angel investing uh, world. Now uh, let's talk about what is better, whether you should invest in India or you should look at uh, outside India. India is number three in terms of number of startups. So number one is US, number two is uh, China and post that uh, India comes. Uh, so should we even consider outside India? So my answer to generally this is uh, kind of a no. Uh, so let's say uh, if, if we give you a chance to invest in Pakistan, even though the startup is very promising, will you want to... example, nahi hai, Rajesh. Nobody is going to say yes to this. <laughs> So the reason towards that is because of understanding the ma macro environment. Right. So apart from uh, the company, apart from the founder, two things also play a very big role. One is sector and the another is uh, the overall uh, economy of that country. So and to know, understand and learn the nuances of each and every country is very tedious. Uh, and then if you are stepping in for the first time, we will say that there are so many opportunities in India that we just we don't even need to look outside of India. 
today g20 is happening in new delhi uh, even like today it is happening so whole of the world leaders have come into india reason being in on indian startups indian startups are going to take over china as well as uh, us in coming uh, decade so the next year uh, the next decade uh, is going to uh, belong to india in terms of uh, startups as as well as for sme companies where we are putting in a lot of effort uh, like where our overall government is putting a lot of focus on doing a lot of manufacturing setting a lot of manufacturing apart from the services which we are providing to the western world so this is the reason we feel ki investing in india itself presents you so many opportunities that we really don't need to uh, look here and there similarly in india if we talk about so any start in any sector if we talk about in india most of the sectors are so in india if i talk about angel investing so right now there are about more than 90000 startups who are, which have got registered and only 4500 startups have got funded out of those 4500 startups we have got close to 100 unicorns by 2030 we will have close to 700 unicorns uh, in india itself and uh, the number of startups are going to go more than a million like more than 10 lakh we will have startups uh, by 2030 so the investment opportunities are going to be huge so in india the big, the good part is any sector any sector uh, provides uh, you a good opportunity like the, the hottest sectors today are in defense in uh, artificial intelligence in technology uh, then we have uh, startups even in education agri tech agri tech fintech e commerce so you name any 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 sector most mostly we will say ki there there are enough opportunities for us to look uh, investing in india itself so right now we are very focused even in the manufacturing uh, uh, sector there is so much focus from government uh, by introducing pli scheme production link incentive schemes uh, and we feel uh, this is going to be a huge leg where a lot of wealth is going to get created for the investors uh, as well as for the founders similarly from an uh, accredited investors definition from sebi point of view anybody who is having a net worth of uh, close to 2 crores qualifies uh, for the definition of accredited investor so there is no angel investor in terms of sebi they they say it as accredited investor so anyone having a net worth of more than 2 crores uh, will come into this bucket so people who are who are having a net worth of more than 2 crores will qualify to be accredited investors what we have overall seen is uh, that uh, in general like today people have the sum of like 2 lakhs 5 lakh 10 lakhs to be invested in a company and uh, they they are easily investing uh, these kind of money into into uh, these businesses and letting them grow uh, as the business grow so before talking about portfolio allocation this is one another thing which i want to talk about i'll quickly run you through these financial concepts and terminologies where uh, these common words uh, we need to look at while uh, uh, even uh, selecting any any company for investment so the first way is uh, tam sam form so tam is your total addressable market sam is your service addressable market and so som is your service obtainable market so basically if i want to talk about in general terms uh, like if i am talking about uh, let's say of uh, clothing market or garment market so the total addressable market is the total market uh, which uh, the company can cater to uh, so let's say my focus area is uh, urban ladies anywhere between 20 to 40 years so my sam will get reduced for the ladies it will so from let's say the total uh, uh, size is 1 lakh crore uh, for the clothing industry so for women it might decrease to let's say 70000 crores and when i talk about anywhere between 20 to 40 years this 70000 crore will further get uh, 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 zero down to let's say 25000 crores so your 1 lakh crore becomes plans your 70000 crore becomes your sam and your 25000 crore becomes your som the next terminology is cac and ltv cac is your customer acquisition cost so what is the customer acquisition cost for the organization we need to understand this and what is the long term value which uh, any customer once he comes in on board he'll be able to deliver similarly mrr so monthly run rate annual run rate this is another things on which we should 
we we need to understand of a business if it is uh, especially uh, small in nature to understand what kind of money or what kind of cash flows they are able to generate every 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 month and every year then cogs cost of goods sold what is the total amount of cost of uh, goods once uh, they are selling it what is the money they are able to generate uh, what is their aov aov is average order value arco is their average retention per user so what is the average order value so let's say uh, on an e-commerce website it is very uh, essential for us to understand that once a customer comes in what is the average order he is able to generate that e-commerce company and uh, average retention per user is the kind of uh, retention they have for so there is a subscription based let's say there is a subscription based model where someone is coming in and doing a subscription of the services so every year what is the kind of retention the company is able to acquire with their uh, users then comes daily active users and monthly active users uh, this can be even further divided into uh, even weekly active users this is how many people are using your app so these kind of matrices you should be able to understand uh, and you should ask uh, from the founders to present their data before investing before even uh, zero down on any company then what is their user retention uh, how many uh, people stick with them? How many investors or customers are uh, loyal to them? What is their burn rate? So out of those retention, there will be few people who will be leaving uh, the company. Like there will be certain customers who will be uh, moving on. So what is their burn rate? Uh, what is the runaway? So what is the cash they have in their uh, books? And what is the runway that they are having right now uh, uh, for their organization? And when it is going to get burned? What is the burn rate of the organization uh, of every month? So like what are their overall expenditure? So if the expenditures are more than uh, the revenue they are able to generate, so uh, then you have a burn rate. Like if your expenses is let's say 10 lakh per month and you are able to generate uh, only 5 lakhs uh, rupees of net margin. So over, obviously your burn rate becomes 5 lakh. So we need to understand that uh, and when it is going to come down to zero and eventually for any organization, the uh, main uh, work for any company is to create shareholders value. When they will be able to start delivering the shareholders value uh, and that gets delivered only in terms of profits. Then I will not talk about in detail about CM level 1, level 2, level 3. These are the things which basically an organization see to see uh, how uh, they are closing on to becoming profitable. Then the last is churn rate. So the churn rate is basically again uh, the churning which any organization is having. Uh, so this is the biggest uh, or the more one of the most important uh, module uh, which we will talk uh, about. Rakesh, so, I, what I understood from that and which I want to share with everyone is that at least my takeaway is that uh, getting into angel investing has its own set of uh, analysis language let's say that, that that has its own language which everybody needs to understand when they are in the process so first is to identify whether you're ready for this and second is to also start learning and understanding in depth each of these things so for example as a founder i i i use these terms because i talk to investors so for me it is from the other side but whoever is investing i think their understanding of this and then being able to interpret it is very important so at Planify, do you guys have any sort of modules or resources which our audience can use uh, to learn more about these things? Yes, we do have. Uh, we we uh, present all of this data on our platform. So I'll in the end I'll showcase our platform. There I'll talk about uh, all of these things, and they will they can eventually even uh, subscribe uh, to uh, the Planify news feed where everything gets covered. Awesome, great. So we'll talk about now portfolio allocation, like how much investment uh, people should overall allocate. So guys, uh, the thumb rule is uh, to put anywhere between 10 to 25% in uh, in the private market. So let's say if you are having 100 rupees uh, network, uh, you should be able to put uh, anywhere between 10 to 25 rupees uh, to the private market. 75% of the money should be kept uh, in the liquid assets. Now, liquid assets could be in mutual funds, it could be in stock listed stocks, it could be even in fixed deposits, bonds, or NCDs, real estate, gold. Anywhere, if you want to keep, you can keep it. 
uh, anywhere between 10 to 25 percent is the money you should allocate uh, for angel uh, angel investments or uh, investing in uh, private markets this 25 or this 10 rupees will again further grow back uh, to 100 rupees in next uh, few years and uh, that will again, uh, we can uh, keep the rotation of the money uh, in that order. Now, the next question comes so out. I from... think, Rajesh, on this is, so if I have one crore of uh, portfolio, you're saying I can easily look at like 10 to 20, 25 lakhs uh, in this. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So if someone is having one crore, they can look to invest anywhere between 10 to 25 lakhs. If someone is having net worth of, let's say, 10 crores, then they can look at investing anywhere between one crore. One to two and, and a half crores. Now, what is the power of law of returns and uh, how to uh, win big without losing much of the money? So here, uh, what we have over also, this again comes from the Pareto rule, like 20% of your investment is going to produce 80% of your returns. And that is going to be, that's a truth of, a truth of the universe. Like whatever you do, even our 20% of our efforts yield basically 80% of our uh, uh, results. Uh, so this is the same law which uh, gets applied here. Now, what's the magic number? Uh, this becomes very important. Like, what's the magic number? How many companies should I invest in? Uh, what should be my portfolio location in, even in that? So let's say you are putting in 25 rupees. So, uh, and idealistically, what we have seen uh, that uh, people should invest basically uh, in at least 20 companies. So if you have 20 investments in startups, you have almost 60% uh, chance that you will get an outlier. Now, uh, what is an outlier first? What is an outlier means if, uh, so Mama Earth is an outlier, your Zomato is an outlier, Swiggy is an outlier, which the companies we talked about earlier. Like if, let's say I invested 1 lakh in uh, Mama Earth and I put in, in 20 companies. Well, so I have invested 20 lakh. Uh, let's say my all 19 companies goes burst. But only one company, one, one lakh itself becomes 15 crores. Let's say even if it is an upstock, that one lakh becomes two crore. Even if my 19 companies goes bust, I'm still oh, absolutely fine because I have got an outlier in my portfolio. So if you have got 20 startups, uh, so the, there is a 60% chance that you will get an outlier in your portfolio. That, that this, company is the is main, going to... this is the main game actually, I think for everybody listening in that uh, you've got to figure out the width has to be there the way that we do in, in stocks as well, right? If you want to find that multi-bagger, you can't bank in on one or two. You need to build a portfolio of 15 to 10, 20 stocks to be able to kind of get that outlier uh, in your portfolio. So right. 20, okay, that number is 20 and also maybe 60% chances. Okay. Right. So out of those 20 companies, if we increase this to 50 companies, 50 startups, then the probability of getting an outlier in our portfolio goes to 90 percent wow. 90 percent chances hai, to so if you are investing 100 rupees idealistically we say that you should at least put uh, that into 20 companies to her company mein 5 5 rupees invest kariye. Usse bhi better karna hai, to you start doing 2 2 rupees uh, in 50 companies but now let's come from the other angle today i have 50 lakh to invest so how much uh, should I allocate to one startup? Uh, and I, I have a fair idea that I will generate another 50 lakh in the next one year uh, to invest in. Uh, and in five years, my over also, how we generally uh, approach this in, in five years, how much money you will be uh, comfortable investing. So in five years, let's say 50 lakh ka average hi pakad lete. Uh, the person says I am ready to commit, uh, um, I will be able to put in two and a half crores. So two and a half crores becomes the total sum and we will divide it into 50. So every company we will suggest the investor to put five, uh, five lakh in each of the companies. And in general, you will not get 50 companies on the first day. 50 companies or 50 startups you will not get the first Aapko generally kabhi bhi ek investment karne jayenge to you will get anywhere between 5 to 10 companies in a year for, an in, for investing. Isse zada aapko pasand hi nahi aayegi. So, agar aapko 50 lakh invest karna hai, to you can easily start putting in 5 lakh whenever you are comfortable understanding a business and you can start committing that kind of a money. 
राधर देन अब मतलब इसको फर्दर ब्रेक डाउन नहीं करने की जरूरत वी डोंट नीड टू ब्रेक इट डाउन लेट से टू ट्वेंटी कंपनीज जस्ट फॉर दिस फिफ्टी लैख क्योंकि ये पचास लाख रुपए को डिप्लॉय करने में अगर इसको ट्वेंटी कंपनीज में या फिफ्टी कंपनीज में स्प्लिट कर देंगे इट विल टेक अस अनदर फोर टू फाइव इयर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई दो स्टार्टअप फाइंडिंग आउट गुड बिजनेस इज द रियल गेम हेयर लाइक इट इज नॉट इन ईजी वर्क राइट इवन फॉर क्लानिफाई we have deployed investment bankers at hyderabad in chennai in bangalore in mumbai in delhi and we keep on traveling across uh, across uh, the breadth and the width of the country to go and meet uh, founders to so that we can uh, get a good company out of 300 startups which apply to us for investment we are able to only select one abhi tak humne 6 startups ki funding kari hai out of those 6 startup we we have personally got uh, meetings done with more than 2000 founders 2000 companies mein se 6 companies select hui hain so this is the kind of ratio we get to and this is companies got uh, this six companies uh, uh, were shortlisted after and matlab in a year's time frame so every month or every two months you will get one company basically to invest in so if you are having a corpus then you can easily think out in that manner that rather than put dividing it into by 20 or dividing by 50 aapke is waqt aapke paas portfolio ke liye investment kar liye kitni companies aapko pasand aa rahi hai uske hisab se aapka allocation hona chahiye i hope i am able to uh, make it under uh, make this understand uh, if you have any doubts and questions please uh, spark it in the chat box and uh, rajesh will take those up at the end so please keep doing that <coughs> right so uh, next question is what is a good pace making new investment on a annual basis this is the same thing which i was talking about that you will not get company so every month or two you get on an average one company so maximum anywhere between 5 to 10 companies is basically you will be able to shortlist uh, for investment so if you are having some good corpus to invest in You can divide that uh, uh, into five year rule जो हमने बताया कि into five year आप कितना कर पाएंगे और उसको fifty से divide करके आप हर company में उसके हिसाब से allocate करना शुरू कर सकते हैं. But we have even overall seen is uh, again from the data point of view. But we have overall seen if any angel investor pick up let's say five companies, so in totality his portfolio ends up uh, doing twenty five companies. This is the maximum he is, he is able to do. और मिनिमम वो पंद्रह कंपनीज के बाद मतलब दे स्टार्ट एक्सपेक्टिंग कि रिटर्न आना शुरू होना चाहिए वी नीड टू हैव अ चर्निंग ऑफ द मनी मतलब रोटेशन होना स्टार्ट होगा सो इफ समवन इज पुटिंग इन फाइव कंपनीज सो ऑन एन एवरेज यू कैन एज्यूम यू विल बी एबल टू पुट इन ट्वेंटी फाइव कंपनीज इन फाइव ईयर्स एंड आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स दिस सर्कुलेशन विल कीप ऑन हैपनिंग इट माइट हैपन दैट इन थ्री ईयर्स यू आर गेटिंग इन लिक्विडिटी इट माइट हैपन इन एटीन मंथ एंड इट माइट हैपन इन फाइव ईयर्स कोई एक दो कंपनीज कोई सेवन ईयर्स तक भी चली जाएगी तो इन जनरल फाइव इयर्स का टाइम होराइजन में आपका वही पैसा वापस आकर बढ़कर रोटेशन में आ जाएगा सो हाउ कॉन्फिडेंट वन क्वेश्चन इफ यू कैन टेक दैट बिकॉज यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सिलेक्शन ऑफ कंपनी सो सुप्रिया इज आस्क्ड दीस कंपनीज आर इन प्री रेवेन्यू और कंपनीज हु हैव ऑलरेडी हु ऑलरेडी हैव ऑपरेशंस व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कंपनीज डू यू सिलेक्ट so we we select uh, basically so we are comfortable so we are more comfortable companies who are having good business like they are already doing uh, they are generating revenue and uh, they they uh, so we do uh, uh, matlab analyze on those terms pre revenue companies ka the risk even gets bigger ha na right so until less koi company ke paas bahut strong patents hain bahut uh, strong unhone uh, आईपी जनरेट कर ली है एंड वी नो कि दिस आईपी कैन नॉट बी रेप्लीकेटेड इन लेट्स से कि कोई इसको पांच साल दस साल बना नहीं सकता एंड इट इज जस्ट मैटर ऑफ टाइम कि अब उसको प्रोडक्शन में जाना है बिकॉज दे आर ऑलरेडी हैविंग पेटेंट दैट काइंड ऑफ कंपनीज वी आर ओके लुकिंग एट एट प्री रेवेन्यू स्टेज बट ओवरऑल वी आर मोर कंफर्टेबल डूइंग इन्वेस्टिंग इन बिजनेस विच आर ऑलरेडी जनरेटिंग कैश फ्लो उसमें भी आपको बहुत अच्छी इन्वेस्टमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज मिल जाएंगी तो आपको बहुत उससे भी एक्सेसिव अर्ली जाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी देन हाउ सो इफ यू आर इनटू सम इंडस्ट्री शुड यू इन्वेस्ट इन दैट इंडस्ट्री और शुड यू लुक आउटसाइड ऑफ योर इंडस्ट्री 
So uh, guys, uh, here again, uh, the thumb rule is uh, like, if you understand that industry in India, they, you will get enough of uh, even those kind of companies uh, to invest in. You will industry in every startups mil jayenge, which can actually go and become big. So if you understand any business or any industry better, it is always better to invest in that industry. And it is also comfortable. Like if you are talking to portfolio managers or investment managers, like we, we, we provide to our investors, we understand. So we have a, a analyst team of close to 24 people who caters to each of the uh, different sectors. Uh, there are sector specific analysts who are sitting and understanding any of the businesses and our report basically covers uh, where you should invest and where you should not like where, where we can pass on the companies. And we, we can ignore those companies. So uh, investment managers through uh, Now again, the next question is extremely interesting. Mere paas ek, uh, uh, startup hai. Now that startup is not performing well. Uh, the startup says ki, I need more money, uh, otherwise I'll die down. So will you want to give him more money? So kya aapko paise aur deni chahiye? So the answer is no, like if uh, whatever money you have committed, uh, if uh, he is not able to generate a uh, business, uh, there is, uh, we, we are, ex malab, we should be fine losing that money rather than ki isko bachane ke liye hum aur paise dete chale jai, and we get into that trap. Now let's look at the other side. So let's say the company is doing well. So uh, let's say you invested in a company at a very early valuation of let's say 10 crores. And then the company, uh, the next round over 40 crores pay. Yeah, 50 crores. Pay. The company went on to uh, uh, the business is growing well. So, 50 crores ki valuation pay wo round kar rahe. So, kya aapko dubara paise dalne chahiye? So, should you double down on your winners? Or should you uh, split your money? Kahi log aisa sochte hai. So, generally when a VC comes in, they generally split their money into three halves or four halves. So, if they are going to commit uh, 100 rupees, to unki philosophy hoti hai ki wo har saal unko 25 rupees denge. So should you uh, follow the VC approach? Should you double down your winner Sh or should you sit idle? So again, uh, malab, uh, I'll be happy if people want to answer this in the chat box. But you should do. So overall, guys, uh, 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 we should basically again uh, not invest in that company. But we have overall seen with our data is that as long as you sit in a company, आपको उतना ज़्यादा return मिलेगा. So this the approach of splitting that money कि आपको अगर किसी company में five lakh rupees invest करने हैं for an example, तो आप सोचिए कि मैं इसमें अभी two lakh लगा लेता हूँ next year two lakh लगा लूँगा is not a good approach. आपको ज़्यादा equity मिल जाएगी five lakh में शुरू में and that will eventually give you better uh, returns in in the end once you invest rather than उसको आप split कर कर लगाएँ. So we should not even double down our winners. Everybody has I I said double down. Uh, Supriya says based on milestone in tranches. Shilpa said I'll use the approach of committing a percentage. Depends on the company also. I agree. I think it really does depend. But uh, I think everybody will have their own perspective on this one, depending right. on the company. Right. So we don't even need to double down our approach because after shuru mein jo aapne commitment kar diya hai, wo hi aapka itna substantial ban jayega. Ban jayega ki aap aapko aur zarurat nahi hai and you can look at other opportunities to increase further. Oh, yes. so that's what you're trying to say, right? Right. Or again, next question becomes very interesting ki should you make an exit when VC enters? Ki matlab ek venture capital aapne 10 crore ki valuation pe let's say invest kiya tha. Uh, or 100 crore ki valuation pe aap VC enter kar raha hai after let's say year. So now what do you want to do? VC is basically, VC be mutual funds, ki hote hai, but VC is invest in private markets, mutual funds invest in listed stocks. Correct. And the difference between returns and the land of the land. VC is kai, wohi angel investing, which you can do with through VCs. Okay? But the VCs ka generally ticket size uh, is more than 1 crore. So should you make an exit when a VC enters? Again, this answer uh, you should not make an exit. Guys, uh, see, uh, assume if someone would have exited uh, Ola after a couple of years or uh, Lenskart or uh, Flipkart or any company. If someone has entered VC and 
at that point of time that uh, that person angel investor would have made an exit and most of the times angel investors do make an exit the reason being vc will try to acquire your shares vc will offer you an exit wo bolenge ki bhai mere ko hi shares aap aur aapko lagta hai ki yaar mere paise three times ho rahe hain five times ho rahe hain 500% ho gaye one year mein to mujhe exit kar dena chahiye to but generally it is not a good idea because vcs ki approach kaisi hogi ki they will want to invest 25 rupees in first year or 33 rupees in first year and then second unke kuch milestones dete hain to they generally do milestone based funding so they will give a milestone to the founder and they will give some money and the next target ki bhai aapko next milestone achieve hone par next funding uh, uh, release ki jayegi to generally it is done in two uh, in three or four tranches तो माइलस्टोन नेक्स्ट अचीव करने का मतलब है कि कंपनी की वैल्यूएशन भी बढ़ गई होगी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स व्हाट वी हैव सीन इज इट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स इट इज नॉट अ गुड आइडिया टू मेक एन एग्जिट व्हेन अ वीसी एंटर्स अगेन आवर थंब रूल ऑफ मेकिंग एन एग्जिट इज ऑलवेज टू थिंग्स पहला इफ द कंपनी ओवरऑल ग्रोथ स्टॉप्स कंपनी की जो ग्रोथ थी 100% 200% 300% द देयर कंपनी स्टार्ट्स ग्रोइंग बाय लेट्स से 15% 20% तो फिर तो लिस्टेड स्टॉक्स भी बढ़े तब आप एग्जिट कर दो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता बीसी है नहीं है कौन इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहा है कौन इन्वेस्टमेंट नहीं कर रहा तब हम एग्जिट कर जाएंगे सो इफ द कंपनीज ग्रोथ बिकम्स लेस या फिर गोज डाउन वी विल वांट टू मेक एन एग्जिट एंड द सेकंड अप्रोच व्हिच वी टेक फॉर मेक एन एग्जिट इज इफ द कंपनीज बिकम्स ओवर वैल्यूड एक 10 रुपीस की चीज 30 35 रुपीस पे बिकती हो तब आपको एग्जिट करना है एंड दिस Typically happens on an IPO. IPO के times पे overall the IPOs तभी लेकर आया जाता है जब stock market में euphoria हो मतलब sentiment अच्छे हो और उस वक्त valuations founders नहीं investors नहीं देखते उस time पे आपको exit करना चाहिए तो अभी आप देखेंगे कि जब भी stock market बढ़ती है जैसे 2022 में stock market बढ़ रही थी तो Zomato, Paytm, Policy Bazaar दुनिया जान की companies ने exit मारे VCs ने और इट वाज पास ऑन रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स के लिए वो पास ऑन कर दी गई है एंड दीज कंपनीज आर नॉट परफॉर्म सिमिलरली मतलब आफ्टर इट हैज कम टू रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स पीपल हु हैव इन्वेस्टेड अर्ली इन Paytm VCs हैव एंटर्ड एट ₹15 ₹20 ₹30 ₹35 तो आज जो अगर वो स्टॉक 900 खड़ा है तो दे आर स्टिल मेकिंग हेल लॉट ऑफ मनी सिमिलर इज द केस विद Zomato सिमिलर इज द केस विद एनी एनी अदर स्टार्टअप है ना तो आपको अगर बड़े इन्वेस्टर्स की तरह पैसे बनाने हैं तो वही सेम फिलोसफी भी बिलीव करनी मतलब चलनी पड़ेगी लिस्टेड गाइस आज की डेट में गेम बन चुकी है लिस्टेड मार्केट इज फॉर बॉल पासिंग तो जब कंपनी सो टुडे ऑन एनएससी देर आर मोर देन टू थाउजेंड कंपनी विच आर लिस्टेड बीएससी पे सेवन थाउजेंड कंपनी लिस्टेड है सो इन आउट ऑफ दीज सेवन थाउजेंड कंपनी इवन इफ यू ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट की पिछले डिकेड में How many companies have uh, grown by more than 20 percent? You will not even get 20 companies. आपके पास 20 companies भी नहीं आएंगी जो CAGR basis पे 20 percent से भी ज़्यादा की growth होगी जिनकी. तो जब companies जब मेरा underlying asset ही नहीं grow कर रहा uh, with 50 percent और 80 percent और 100 percent, तो मेरे returns भी वैसे ही आएंगे. This is one of the reasons people get trapped. कि वो higher valuation पे लेकर बैठ गए अब वो share जब low मतलब नीचे गिर गया उसके बाद और वो अब वेट कर रहे हैं कि कब तक वो स्टॉक ऊपर आएगा एंड देन दे विल ट्राई टू मेक एन एग्जिट सो अगर प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टर्स या वेल्दी इन्वेस्टर्स की तरह पैसे बनाने हैं तो दिस इज द सिंपल फिलोसफी कि आप अर्ली इन्वेस्ट करें जब कंपनी की ग्रोथ हो रही होती है एंड वी विल मेक एन एग्जिट व्हेन द कंपनी बिकम्स ओवर वैल्यूड ओवर वैल्यूड आर जनरली आईपीओज आर जनरली ओवर वैल्यूड दीज डेज तो हम उस टाइम पे एग्जिट कर रहे होते हैं so the next part is asset allocation so i talked about ki agar aapke paas 100 rupees hain usko aap narrow down karke 25 rupees invest kariye aur out of the 25 rupees bhi hame har company mein uh, 1 rupee 25 paisa in 20 startups mein invest karna hai so this is the philosophy which we work with our investors and the kind of returns jo maine show kiye kiye the wo same philosophy pe hi aaye hain How much capital should you allocate? Again, depends upon कि आपका overall portfolio size कितना है. Uh, rather than talking कि आप पांच लाख लगा लो, दस लाख लगा लो, there will be people who will say कि मेरे पास दस करोड़ हैं. There will be people जो कहेंगे मेरे पास पूरे साल के let's say दस लाख हैं. तो उसके हिसाब से ही आपको percentage पे calculation करना. For any 
एंजल इन्वेस्टमेंट वी जनरली ऑफर कि आप बियर मिनिमम टू लाख रुपीज की चेक साइज लिखे दो लाख से पांच लाख का बीच का चेक साइज इज गुड इनफ मतलब ये हम फिर भी मानकर चलते हैं कि दो से पांच लाख का आप चेक साइज लिखकर एक कंपनी में बैठे ताकि आपको एक सब्सटेंशियल सम शुरू में ही मिल जाए राधर देन बाद में आपको वापस लेने की जरूरत ना मिले हाउ मच ऑफ योर सो ये तो हमने बात कर ली सो हाउ टू इन्वेस्ट एनी पर्टिकुलर प्लेटफॉर्म सो वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट प्लेटफॉर्म ट्राइंग टू ऑर्गेनाइज दिस इज थ्रू प्लानिंग फाइव ऑब्वियसली देर आर अदर प्लेटफॉर्म ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इन इंडिया एक दो प्लेटफॉर्म है एक एंजल लिस्ट करके है जो वर्ल्ड मतलब जो बेसिकली यूएस का है अगर आप वो देखना चाहें उसमें इंडियन स्टार्टअप्स भी कई बार जाते हैं देन देर इज लेट्स वेंचर बैंगलोर की कंपनी है ये वहां पर आपको एंजल इन्वेस्टमेंट्स के लिए स्टार्टअप्स मिल जाएंगे बट यू विल नॉट गेट प्री आईपीओ यू विल नॉट गेट एस कंपनीज एंड यू विल नॉट गेट सेकेंडरी सेल्स मतलब आप इन कंपनीज में से अगर लिक्विडेट भी करना चाहें तो वहां पर वो नहीं मिलता तो दैट्स नॉट अ फुल मतलब जितना कुछ हम कर रहे हैं प्लानिफाई में Uh, they are that kind of not doing ten uh, percent of it, but uh, that's another platform. वो भी एक ठीक ठीक platform है मेरे हिसाब से. And then obviously there are very small angel networks. India में आपको दिल्ली में मुंबई there is a Mumbai angel network, Hyderabad angel network, Chennai angel network, Indian angel network. दुनिया जान के ऐसे networks भी मिल जाएंगे. इनमें भी startups की opportunities आती हैं. Most of these companies do not deal with again pre IPO SMEs. SMEs करने के लिए भी आप प्लानिफाई पर देख सकते हैं सो देर आर फ्यू अदर ऑप्शंस आल्सो अवेलेबल ऑब्वियसली यू कैन इवन अगर आपके पास बैंडविड है तो यू कैन इवन एनरोल विद आईआईटी वहां पर इंक्यूबेटर और एक्सेलरेटर्स चलते हैं जहां पर अच्छे स्टार्टअप्स आते रहते हैं वो वो भी uh, आगे फर्दर इन्वेस्टर्स को वो एड ऑन इंफॉर्मेशन भेजते हैं सो एट प्लानिफाई वी ट्राई टू कवर ऑल ऑफ दीज इंक्यूबेटर एक्सेलरेटर्स वी ऑल्सो वर्क विद लॉट ऑफ लाइक विद लॉट ऑफ बहुत सारी ऐसी कंपनीज भी हैं जैसे एसोशैम करके एक एक बेसिकली नेटवर्क है जो बहुत सारे इवेंट्स करती है सो वी वी ट्राई टू बी प्रेजेंट इन दोज इवेंट्स टू गेट टू मीट न्यू फाउंडर्स वी ट्राई टू कवर टाई टाई करके भी एक नेटवर्क एक नॉन एनजीओ काइंड ऑफ प्लेटफॉर्म है जो कि इन एंजल इन्वेस्टर्स को फाउंडर्स के साथ कनेक्ट करता है और उनके भी इवेंट्स होते रहते हैं क्रॉस इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया सो वी ट्राई टू बी देयर सो दैट वी वी गेट न्यू फाउंडर्स हमें भी रहता है कि अच्छे फाउंडर्स को हम uh, के पास हम भी पहुंच सके राधर देन दे जस्ट कमिंग ऑन टू आर प्लेटफॉर्म सो वी ट्राई टू कवर दीज इंक्यूबेटर्स एक्सेलेटर्स एज वेल एज दीज इवेंट इवेंट इवेंट्स अक्रॉस ब्रेथ एंड लेंथ इवन वी हैव सेटअप टीम्स अक्रॉस इंडिया मेजर मल्टी जो अपनी मेट्रोज हैं वहां पर हमने टीम्स भी एलोकेट की हैं सो दैट इट बिकम्स इजी फॉर अस टू कोऑर्डिनेट एंड वर्क विद द फाउंडर्स वी आल्सो वर्क विद लॉट ऑफ सोर्सिंग पार्टनर्स तो हमें चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट से कंपनी सेक्रेटरीट से इन लोगों से भी कंपनीज आती हैं फॉर फंड रेजिंग सो दिस इज सो बेसिकली अगर मैं एंजल इन्वेस्टिंग की अप्रोच की बात करूं सो यू ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट यू वर्क विद अ लॉट ऑफ सिंडिकेट्स यू स्क्रीन दीज कंपनीज then there is a due diligence process uh, which uh, happens in due diligence you basically understand what kind of uh, uh, what is the legality of the company what is the business they are doing what is the and you need to understand the founders their margins of the business so ye sari cheeze hum apne platform pe cover bhi karte hain na due diligence report our analyst basically cover these Uh, क्या us organization ke loopholes hain kya aur we certify some certain companies जो सर्टिफाई करते हैं उसमें हम खुद भी इन्वेस्ट करते हैं वी आस्क आर सर्टेन सेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स जो हमारे साथ क्लोजली वर्क कर रहे हैं उनको हम बोलते भी हैं कि आप रिकमेंड भी करते हैं कि आप इनमें इन्वेस्ट कर दीजिए बट वी हैव वी हैव आल्सो गिवन एन ऑप्शन टू मतलब फॉर द फाउंडर्स वी हैव गिवन देम एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर दे कैन शोकेस देयर कंपनीज टू द इन्वेस्टर्स एंड टेक फीडबैक ऑन व्हाट काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दे शुड डू to get investments uh, directly from uh, from the investors so humne launch pad karke ek pura platform bhi taiyar kiya hua hai and we are present on android app as well as an ios app so wo sab cheezon mein hum available hain we also so in this process uh, ask, so there is a founder jis jaise shark tank mein aapne dekhe hain ki founders come in and they pitch uh, their startup idea they uh, make the other person understand uh, about the business 
you understand the term sheet but what is the overall valuations what is the skin in the game of the founders and after that uh, after doing the legal due diligence you can basically close the deal and you can basically after signing all the documents you can put the money into uh, into that startup and this is the the, the complete process uh, we facilitate at our uh, platform as well so i will not go into detail because uh, this will take a lot of time we have already shot uh, uh, over our time so these are the different rights uh, which we need to see in uh, while uh, doing the term sheet ki kis tarah ke aapko liquidation rights mil rahe hain kya aapke paas uh, anti dilution clauses hain preemptive clauses hain uh, again there are too many rights uh, which uh, gets covered uh, uh, in in the term sheets Uh, maybe rajesh just sharing a resource where you know everybody can come in if there are blogs or the website i think for now that would be a good starting point and maybe if there is interest we can do some follow up uh, sessions uh, given that we are also on uh, shortage of time now and i i was keen to take up some questions as well if they come along right so uh, you can guys uh, come on our platform so uh, if you can uh, see the screen uh, so on our website you can come in and uh, you can create your profile uh, it is very easy aap uh, aakar uh, basically you can create an uh, angel investor and you can just sign up using your gmail or hana uh, whatever uh, even you can sign up through your whatsapp and once that is done uh, our team will uh, connect with you they'll understand uh, uh, your business uh, they they'll understand uh, uh, what kind of investments you are looking for and we basically facilitate a lot of startups uh, uh, again to raise funds through our platform so aap startup mein agar invest karna chahte hain to we will make you understand which business is good for investment and which you should not look out for investments similarly we also have pre ipos तो बहुत सारी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो अभी आने वाले टाइम में पब्लिक जाएंगी तो बोट है लाइक अमन गुप्ताबल फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट अगेन वी नैरो डाउन एंड वी क्रिएट वेरी डिटेल रिसर्च रिपोर्ट so let me just uh, give you a glimpse of the risk, the kind of detailing which we are doing so we create a lot of authentic uh, content on youtube channel this is my video which i have done uh, like 2 3 years back aaj ki video bahut hi khaas hone wali hai so and uh, we talk in detail about an organization uh, the kind of detailing we do so what people tell us uh, about our research reports is uh, that they do not get enough of uh, this information even for the listed companies like their stock broker does not provide them these kind of detailing even for the listed companies jo hum uh, private companies ke liye kar rahe hain and uh, so you can see the company in a single gist like what is their profits what is their price to earning price to book value what is their growth ratios uh, what is about, uh, about the organization about their ipo details their fundraising details business model product services uh, their revenue segmentation government initiatives their swot analysis and this is the first segment there, there are about eight things uh, which we cover you can see everything in charts uh, you will understand why some businesses if we are saying what is this business is good so we will be able to justify why we are saying this business is good or not and the kind of detailing we have uh, you will be able to understand the debt side to it uh, the uh, overall operating efficiency um, net margins all of these details are captured on real time basis Uh, even if you want to compare it with the other companies like for nse if we are comparing it with bsc so kis tarah ka revenue hai market cap ke hisab se comparison price to book price to earning again these uh, reports are loved by the investors kyunki they are able to take the decision the financials uh, ko aap overall uh, look through kar sakte ho this will give you a good insight which is an undervalued counter an overvalued counter or a fairly valued counter about the shareholders uh, the information is present key investors fir us company ke bare mein jo bhi news across the web aati hai across google uh, we uh, we basically put that on our website in less than 24 hours it gets automatically updated on our website to aap usko grow through kar sakte hain ki business kis tarah shape up kar raha hai even the corporate events like their dividend history their stock split bonus split uh, their legal formalities all of this is covered into our research reports so these kind of research reports you can uh, find it on our Plan planify website we are also present on android as well as ios platform 
you can even approach us through uh, neha so uh, good part is like uh, we are working now closely with the uh, humanista so we'll uh, empower them uh, uh, take uh, we'll help uh, their investment to take the investment decision so we basically do not charge uh, anything uh, to our investors if that the, this is one of the frequently asked question we generally do not charge anything uh, for our portfolio uh, allocation or uh, uh, for for doing asset allocations we help our investors uh, we uh, uh, take the right decisions uh, this is pretty much uh, what we do uh, if there are any questions i'll open up this deck because this this uh, <laughs> This master class is guys a bit lengthy. Like it, it is. Uh, it... It's truly a master class, Rajesh. What you have put together is a deck. I have not seen such a comprehensive deck uh, in a very long time. So, um, I think one hour is less. It doesn't justify <laughs> the amount of, of things that uh, you know this topic has. So, uh, let's open the floor for some questions, Rajesh. Uh, we we are already over time, and for the first session, I'm. Happy to take a question. Mona has a question. How does Planify yeah. earn then? Right. So Mona, we charge uh, to the people who we are providing liquidity. So if we are asking founders to raise funds through, well, if, we are, if we are helping founders, so we generally charge them anywhere between 5 to 10%. Uh, that is generally our fees. So we charge from sellers and investors. This is how we make money. Uh, Supriya has uh, put in, depends upon the company. So this is the question uh, she has put in. I'll use the VC approach. Uh, Tika has asked a question, Rajesh Upar, resources, websites to know more about upcoming startups and MSMEs. So I think we just showed, uh, Odisha, you can log into planify.in. So after the session, we will, uh, as Womanista, we are also in talks with Planify uh, on how we can help you all start getting more interested and more invested through angel as well as the SME IPO, pre-IPO route. Uh, and if you enjoyed this session, we'd love to hear from you as well. What more do you want us to do? I, I saw the pre-IPO that looks really interesting. And I I mean, personally, I'd love to have another session on that. And what all does it take for someone to get started? Is it just a regular DMAT account? What is the minimum ticket size, etc.? cetera? Uh, I'm sure those things we will be covering by and by. Um, so just keep asking questions if you yeah. have any. Otherwise, uh, uh, I can give uh, you guys a Google form uh, that will uh, basically you can fill in that form. Uh, I, I can put that into the chat group. So you fill it. My, my team can get in touch with you and uh, they'll basically help you out uh, in understanding uh, and how, how you should basically uh, start investing. Perfect. So, go up, uh, Rajesh, you can even have that sent to me. I will circulate it to the entire community. Okay. Um, and we can take it from there. Good. Let, let there me... are no more questions. Anyone else with questions? Ladies? So, this is the registration link, uh, guys. Uh, you can fill in this form. Uh, this will... Uh, so this will help us uh, get in touch with you mm -hmm. and then we can take the things forward. Uh, if this is a very small form, it will take less than a minute. Perfect. Just to put in your details. So, thank you so much, Rajesh. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining in. For me personally, there are so many takeaways. I think I'm still absorbing all the information. Frankly, it was uh, one of its kind uh, getting started with angel investing. A uh, few things which, you know, I've made a note of, uh, which I'm taking back. Of course, apart from all the greed that you've managed to get us started with, that we and we want to make that kind of return <laughs> over and above what we can make regularly. I think apart from that, what really, um, you know, two, three points which I want to share with everyone, which I took away is that 10 to 25% of the portfolio allocation, because this is a fairly high risk investment. Uh, and you rightly said, let's be also very cognizant that where money is being made, there are also chances of losing money. So let's, let's look at our allocation very sharply on this. I also took away that the Pareto rule, right? So 20 companies uh, minimum to start with. If you want to increase those chances, it's 50 companies. Uh, so it's not just that one or two odd companies. You have to learn to allocate a certain chunk. 
and finally i really love the way that you all are already doing the hard work for us uh, by doing all the due diligence so that was my third takeaway and frankly that was the first time i went on your website that really struck me which is why i reached out to you because i agree that that kind of um, information is hard to find even for uh, stocks in one place so hats off to you guys mm -hmm. उटली I totally love that what you're doing is actually bringing it to the masses, making it simpler for us. And uh, I would say last point here for me is that it might not happen as of tomorrow that you get started because it's a new asset class. But we also can't ignore this asset class, right? It's an opportunity which is waiting to boom. And I always feel early, uh, you know, as women, we need to be a, a, aware of what's happening. The the more we can make money. uh i think more we can support other women in making money as well so that's my take away rajesh thank you so much for taking out time today in and fact, uh, yeah. just to add a couple of lines so like out of now four investors the one investor is female it is very heartening to see that this ratio has uh, substantially like, like increased like 25% of our investors are now uh, female uh, earlier it used to be this figure was less than 4% Like right. in last decade, it has increased, and we think there is a, another very long way to go. And the startup is going to be the next uh, world uh, where everyone will come eventually to invest in. Even we have got a few Shark Tank uh, companies uh, on our platform, which we really like, and we think these business can scale, uh, so that people can invest even in these uh, companies as well. So do keep sharing resources. We will send it across the community, and basis the feedback. uh we can look at scheduling more sessions in the upcoming quarters maybe once a quarter kind of uh, uh, you know semblance can be there thank you so much once again everyone it's the first effort and it was a great session uh, rajesh thanks to you for making it so interesting and so detailed so you. look forward to engaging further bye thank everyone you. have a great saturday see you bye bye